Welcome to Engineering Mechanics Dynamics in this lesson in Curvilinear Motion, Tangential and Normal Component. And so to start it off, we'll draw a path of a particle. And so here's our particle. And here's our center of curvature, O. And the key to tangential and normal components is a coordinate system that has its origin on the curve. And so here's our coordinate system. And we have n, which is our normal, and our t, which is tangential. So then we have our unit vector, u sub n, in the normal direction, and our unit vector, u sub t, in the tangential direction. And so u sub t is the unit vector tangent to the path of the particle, and u sub n is the unit vector normal to the path of the particle. And lastly, if you split up this path into little segments, each segment could be formed, um, yeah, could be formed from the arc of it an associated circle. And so each segment has its own arc to it, and therefore its own center of curvature. So this segment has its own center of curvature. And to the center of curvature, we have the radius of curvature rho. And so maybe right here we have a center of curvature for this row. And so essentially it's the row is the radius at that particular spot in time. And now we're going to talk about velocity and we have our particle right here with that center of curvature right there with a radius of curvature right there and a velocity right there. V U sub T. So velocity is always tangent to the circle. That's its direction of its vector. And its magnitude is done by taking the time derivative of its position. And so the V vector equals the velocity in the tangential direction and the velocity equals the time derivative of the position vector. And here's a problem-solving thing that you'll want to know. And so let's we have a path and center of curvature O. And now let's put the use of T vectors at the origin. So here's use of T. And then after a change in time, And so then you get a change in use of t. And here's theta. So how could you find the change in use of t from theta? Well, it's quite simple. Let's split this up into two 90 degree triangles. And so then the sine of theta divided by two is that, sine of theta divided by 2, and you just multiply it by 2 to get the whole length. And lastly, we're going to talk about acceleration. And so we'll draw a path once again, and our center of curvature with our particle. And so you have a normal component of acceleration and a tangential component of acceleration. And this gives you your total acceleration. And how to describe these values? First, to get to them, you take the uh, derivative of velocity with respect to time. And so that'll give you your tangential component, which is your um, instantaneous change in velocity with respect to time, plus your normal component right there, which I will further explain. And so we have the derivative of u sub t with respect to time, and that equals the velocity over the radius of curvature in the normal direction. So a sub n in the normal direction equals that, because we have velocity over rho times u sub n times v, because we have u sub t with respect to time times v. And then in the tangent direction, 
we have this, you can see how they're related, so then you put them together, and you end up with that. And one last comment on how we got from this to that is the chain rule. And so if you have V times the use of T, and you take the derivative of it with respect to time, well, you'll get the derivative of V times use of t plus v times the derivative of use of t. And so that's all it is. All right, so here's an example problem. The boat is traveling along the circular path, and here's my lovely boat, with the speed of v equals 0 0.0625 t squared in meters per second, where t is in seconds. Determine the magnitude of its acceleration when t equals 10 seconds. And so given we have v as a function of time and rho, is 40 meters right there and find acceleration at t equals 10 seconds and to do this we're going to want to split it up into the normal and tangential component so let's first find the normal component so a sub n equals v squared over rho which is going to equal 0, 0.0, 0 sorry 0 0.0625 times at 10 seconds t squared and the whole v squared over rho which is 40 meters and this is meters per second squared and you end up with 0 0.9766 meters per second squared and then, now let's do the tangential. And so tangential is equal to V dot, which so that will equal 0 0.0625 T squared D DT, which becomes 0 0.125 T. And so at 10 seconds, we have an acceleration of 1.25 meters per second squared. So we have those, but now we want to find total acceleration. And so that's the two components put together. So we have N and T, you put them together and you have your total acceleration. And to find it, you can just do Pythagorean's theorem. And so that's A squared so that's the square root of a sub t squared plus a sub n squared will equal a, and that ends up equaling 1.59 meters per second squared. And there you have it. Hopefully this video helped. Um, thanks for watching. If you ever have any questions, don't ever be afraid to ask them. And good luck continuing to learn um, all these good things. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.